Hi, this is Darlene with Featherweight Doctor. Last weekend, we posted a video on a free motion quilting demonstration using the Singer Featherweight 221. There were lots of interesting comments, people not knowing whether their featherweight could do the free motion quilting. So we thought we would put together a video to make it a little bit easier for setting yours up at home. First and foremost, as you are aware, the 221 doesn't have feed dogs that drop down into the bed. So you, it is necessary to cover them. There was a metal cover created and manufactured by Singer. Um, I prefer not to use the metal cover or the metal plate because it scratches up the bed of your machine and it also creates a hump in when you're free motion quilting. So it, it creates a little bump and you cannot move your fabric around as fluidly. Um, I prefer to use good old fashioned painter's tape available at any home store, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Anywhere they sell painter's tape, any old blue painter's tape will work. Be careful not to use masking tape, however, because it will leave icky um, residue behind on your machine that you'll have to get off. So to set up your machine, first and foremost, you're gonna take a little piece of painter's tape. And I set it up by just covering up my bee dogs, like so. Um, it doesn't create a hump, it just creates a nice fluid movement for which to move your project around, not creating any additional friction between the bottom of your quilt and the inside of your, your sewing bed. So once your painter's tape is installed, you want to set your stitch length lever to the middle, so not up, which is reverse, or down, which is forward, but in the middle, I call it dead horizon. That way your feed dogs are just going up and down and they're not feeding forwards and backwards, therefore pushing the fabric around. The next step in setting your machine up for free motion is to use your thread on your thread stand. Obviously your machu machine comes equipped with a spool and you can put that on there. However, using an exterior thread stand helps with the fluidity of the thread through the tension discs and through the needle. So once you thread your machine up, you're almost set and ready to go. Next is installing your darning foot. There's a little arm on it uh, that is in the upright position. This arm goes up over the needle changer and then it slides on from behind. You just simply tighten the screw in the shaft and tighten it down. All right, the next thing we might have to do is monkey a little with our tension. If your upper tension assembly is properly calibrated, you should sit between a three and a four for regular piecing and stitching. For free motion quilting, even on modern mach machines, it's not uncommon to move your tension up. So the higher the number, the more tension. I usually seat my tension right around six or seven when I'm free motion quilting. By bringing your bobbin thread up to the top, you're creating a nice smooth start for your free motion quilting. Some people believe in stitching forward and then stitching back, and other people believe in just making several stitches in the same place. I like to make a series of teeny tiny little stitches called locking stitches. Um, that way I can cut my fabric or my thread down at the fabric level and I don't need to knot and bury. So I'm simply gonna make a series of teeny tiny little stitches, and then I'm gonna move to a more regular quilted stitch length. All right, let's, this is quilting dutifully, but let's assume for a second that your machine did not start making stitches as, as you anticipated it would. There's a couple of different troubleshooting issues that could be the source. First one is that your tension is not set right. The more we see these little machines come through our shop, the more we find that the tension assemblies are not assembled properly. There's a pin on the inside of it that needs to be facing out towards you and not in. And that may be one reason why your uh, upper tension doesn't have much of an effect when you go to tighten or loosen it. Proper tension is essential 
if your machine is going up and down but not making stitches, another reason that that could be is because this dial right here, which is called the presser foot tension, it might need to be lowered. So it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. What it does is it brings the balance a little bit lower into the middle of the sandwich and then allows you to make stitches. So the two areas that you could possibly troubleshoot if your machine is not making free motion stitches, if you are trying to free motion, is to, to mess with your upper tension, usually tightening it works, and the other thing would be lowering your presser foot tension by tightening or righty tidying this. So another important tension test that you should perform is your bobbin tension. If you're not making stitches, one problem could be that your bobbin would be in backwards. The proper position for your thread is up over to the left, not up over to the right. When the thread is up over to the left and then correctly inserted into the bobbin casing, your bobbin will spin counterclockwise, so you'll know you're in the right spot. The next thing to do is to check the calibration of the actual tensioning. This is a tester that we use, a bobbin tension tester. You clip the little alligator mouth onto the bobbin thread. And I usually tilt mine back a bit so that the bobbin doesn't go jumping out at me. It's important that your fingers are not obstructing the movement of the bobbin in order to get a good reading. And then all I'm gonna do is pull. And there's a line right there that has the right tension and as you can see I am a little tight. When the indicator goes below the line it means that it's too tight and when the indicator goes above it it means it's too loose. So I'm going to take this upper screw and make a minute adjustment. When you're adjusting your bobbin it is a little adjustment. Lefty loosey righty tighty. I'm going to double check it again on my tester. There I am. All right. So now I know in terms of tension that my bobbin is tensioned properly and if I'm still having some trouble getting really nice balanced stitches, all I have to deal with is my upper tension. It's like moving, removing a variable out of the equation. So let's see here. making my locking stitches. Now changing to a quilted stitch length. Now most of your machines may not be calibrated or you may not know what a properly calibrated stitch length looks like. Industry standard is 10, 10 to 11 stitches per inch. And the best way to do that, to check your calibration of the size of your stitches, is to draw two parallel lines that are exactly one inch apart from each other and perform some tests with stitches in between. That way you can visually make a mental memory of what 10 to 11 stitches per inch looks like. And so when you become the human stitch regulator in free motion mode, you'll be able to know that your stitches are the right size. We love doing these videos for all of our friends out on social media. If you have any questions that you would like us to address in one of our videos, please send in your request to info at featherweightdoctor.com. Thanks for joining me. Ready, set, sew.